Hey fellow AP nerds, here we are back in the lab with all my close friends. They don't talk very much, but a couple of them look really good, and others are great listeners. Maybe you can tell which is which. The purpose of this brief video is just to show you two new models that we have, one related to the eye, this is a model of the retina, and the other one related to the ear, a cochlear model. As you probably know by now, I'm a big fan of drawing it first to know it. So let's do that first, then we will look at the models. Okay, what we're looking at here, and I'll try to speak loud to be heard over the ventilation in the lab today, is an artist's rendering, myself being the artist, of the retina. Very similar to the one you saw me draw for the histology of the retina. I'm always a big fan of drawing it out first, then I can look at the model, and the model hopefully will go a little faster for me. So when I look at the layers of your eye at the back, of course I have the sclera, all those collagen, the white of your eye. I have the choroid layer, sometimes called the vascular tunic, lots and lots of blood vessels in it, and very dark to prevent light from coming in where I don't want it to. Then you'll see here I've sort of exaggerated what's called the pigmented layer of the eye. So as light comes in from this direction and strikes the retina, the nervous part of my eye, this pigmented layer, which has a good amount of pigment in it, is there to prevent the scattering of light around on the retina. So notice the distinction between the choroid layer or choroid coat and the pigmented layer. Make sure that you know there's two layers here. This is not choroid, it's separate and distinct from the choroid layer. Then we get to the neurons, three layers, the rods and the cones, the bipolar cells, and the ganglion cells. There are a few other cells here, but not that you have to name on the model. Notice that the ganglion cells here converge forming the optic nerve, cranial nerve number two, just for fun. The bipolar neurons or bipolar cells are located between the photoreceptors, which are the rods and the cones, and the ganglion cells. Let me zoom in on it a little bit. So looking a little closer at my picture here, we have the sclera or fibrous tunic of the eye, the choroid in black or vascular tunic, then the retina or nervous tunic of the eye, which includes the photoreceptors, rods, rod-shaped ends, and cones, red, green, or blue. The rods, of course, for non-color vision, the cones for high-definition high color vision. These are the photoreceptors, and notice their dendrite ends are pointing away from the light source this is related to the totally backwards visual physiology that you'll probably learn about in your lecture. I don't want this to get too lectury. This is a lab video. So, sclera, choroid, pigmented layer, the rods and cones or photoreceptors, bipolar cells, ganglion cells in the eye. Hopefully seeing this picture will help us understand the model a little better. Okay, here you see a close-up model of the retina. And we can name those parts and layers that we're usually required to know pretty easily. But first, I want to show you how this messes people up once in a while when they look at it. Because what you're looking at here is two different versions of the same thing. Make sure that you notice that what I see over here 
are just larger versions of these cells right here. So these are not two separate things. This is just an enlarged version of this right here. The other thing that sometimes messes people up is the orientation of this model. They think you have to only look at it this way, whereas I prefer to do this. Lay the thing sideways so now I can see the parts, the layers, as they might actually exist in somebody's eye. And you people know how this drill works. We'll go through this. I'll name some of the parts for you. And then at the end of this video, I'll give you a little practice naming them. So first, let's talk about this bunch of connective tissue out here. This is the sclera or the white of the eye. This layer right here, notice the blood vessels in it. This is that choroid layer. Typically, in a lab setting, you have to name the pigmented layer, the rods and cones, the bipolar neurons, and the ganglion cells. So here you have my artistic interpretation of some structures in the cochlea, at least those that might be on a model you have to name. So we have three fluid-filled chambers from top to bottom, the scala vestibuli, the cochlear duct, and the scala tympani down here at the bottom. The scala vestibuli filled with perilymph, and so is the scala tympani, Perilymph, a fluid, a lot more like extracellular fluid, has a higher concentration of sodium than it does of potassium. The cochlear duct is filled with endolymph, a lot more like the fluid inside the cells or the intracellular fluid with more potassium in it than sodium. Sorry for diverging into lecture here a little bit. It's hard to help. But the movement of these fluids and membranes is what allows us to hear right here in the cochlear duct. This structure right here, known as the spiral organ or the organ of corti, corti being the name of an Italian physiologist. So generally speaking, we're dropping people names off of things. So spiral organ is pretty common here. But inside the cochlear duct, under the vestibular membrane, above what we call the bacillar membrane, that's the blue one right here, We have the organ of hearing, the organ of corti, corti, spiral organ. Make sure you check with your lab instructor what all they want included in the organ of corti or the spiral organ. These specialized epithelial cells, we call hair cells right here, you see them in green, which have these little stereocilia on them. These are functioning as my mechanoreceptors. So these are actually specialized cells of epithelium inside this cochlear duct. The tectorial membrane, this is that gelatinous membrane that we have inside the cochlear duct. And the bacillar membrane down here at the bottom beneath the hair cells. I don't want to get into the physiology of hearing here. You have a lecture professor for that. But when the fluids get vibrating, if the bacillar membrane wiggles up and down, which it does, notice it's thinner than the tectorial membrane, it will smash these hair cells into the tectorial membrane, mechanoreception, transducing sound into nervous impulses, because what do I have attached to the bottom of these hair cells? Neurons, part of my auditory or vestibulocochlear nerve. 
So clarify with your lab instructor, do they want the organ of corti or the spiral organ to be just the hair cells and neurons, or do they consider it to be the hair cells and the tectorial membrane and the basilar membrane, everything used in hearing? Make sure you ask them that, specify hair cells, tectorial membrane, neurons here, basilar membrane beneath. Again, scale of vestibuli, cochlear duct, separated by the vestibular membrane. Cochlear duct, scale of tympani, separated by the basilar membrane with the tectorial membrane sitting here inside the cochlear duct. And there are my hair cells. Hopefully this is enough to get us to understand the models. So here we have a very nice cochlear model. And you can see the same sort of thing that we saw in the retina model, essentially the same thing twice. So this is your cochlea, the snail shell part of your ear. And I've got my chambers in it, the fluid filled scala vestibuli, cochlear duct, scala tympani in this part of the model right here. Scala vestibuli up above, cochlear duct, scala tympani. If I look at the larger version of the same thing, if I look at the much larger version, I hope you can see here, using this structure right here, the vestibular membrane as my landmark, I can see the cochlear duct is right here, filled with endolymph, remember. The scala vestibuli would be up here, scala tympani below here in green. And I can see quite nicely here those structures we use for the mechanoreception of hearing. I can see the tectorial membrane in purple. Blue right here is the basilar membrane, the one that moves. In green, I can see my hair cells, the actual cells that perform the mechanoreception for us. Hair cells, see the neurons attached, basilar membrane, vestibular membrane, tectorial membrane, the cochlear duct, scala vestibuli, scala tympani. Now, if it was me and I wanted somebody to name this entire structure here that we hear with, this is the spiral organ or the organ of corti. Make sure you check with your lab instructor how much do they want included in the spiral organ? So you know for your lab quiz or practical exam. They might want just these hair cells. They might want both the inner and outer hair cells. Who knows? Make sure you ask them. Force them to specify. Again, just a quick review. Three chambers. Scala tympani down below. Cochlear duct. Scala vestibuli, vestibular membrane, tectorial membrane, basilar membrane, and in green there, the hair cell.